Welcome to the Weightlifting World Podcast. Today's guest is a really good friend of ours. He's a former Olympian representing Iran at the 92 Games. He was Iranian champion from 1988 to 1994. He held the Iranian national record in the old 72 kilo class with a snatch of 140, a clean and jerk of 175 and a total of 315 kilos. He won bronze and silver medals at the 1990 and 1993 Asian Championships, won the gold at the 2001 British Championships and won the World Masters Games in 02 and 05. He's also a man who in his prime sported one hell of a moustache. <laughs> 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 Kazim Panjavi. Hey Kazim, how you doing? Good evening. How are you guys? Very, very good, thank you. How are you? Thank you very much. Just uh, chilling out for the my uh, course and I'm trying to ready for tomorrow course. Where, where was it? One. Where was your Where was it, Kazim? Um today I had a, um, a course in uh, Chessington. In Chessington? What? Um and Really? I, yes, and the uh, one is uh, tomorrow is going to be in Finsbury Park. Finsbury London. Where was your course in Chessington? Whereabouts? Um, it's university. Um, because we're actually speaking to you from Chessington right now. Yes, that's where that, that's where really? this, that's where we live. Yes, that is the. Oh, way. I was the. I, I could come and have a. You could come have come for a, a lunch. I could come for lunch or dinner. Sorry. <laughs> that is the Weightlifting World Podcast headquarters. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, wish, I wish I knew it. Sorry, I just. So, uh, so what, what course was it you were teaching, Kazim? I'm, I'm uh, uh, level one. Uh, for Bola, the Bola course and also we're trying to develop new, new level 2 yeah and also uh, we um, it's nearly done now but um, I don't know what's happened to the new management because uh, yesterday they, they had a new interview yeah uh, they wanted to bring up a new um, um, what's called uh, um, education ma- uh, yes. officer yeah um, so I don't know what's, what's happened afterwards it's going to be changed again yes another change for me yeah I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just so worried. <laughs> well, Again. We'll come on to that stuff a bit later on. Um, but what I wanted to initially ask was, how did you get involved in the sport of weightlifting in Iran? Oh, I, actually, um, uh, I came from a Kurdish city. Um, uh, it's Mahabad called. Uh, uh, and uh, I really keen up for every sport, but we didn't have enough facility. Uh, and when the revolutions came, uh, 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 we had no place to 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 do uh, to continue my gymnastic, uh, and they kick us out from the the place. Become um, a military um, um, for uh, for soldiers. They are sleeping at night. I don't know what's called, um, and uh, we have to find somewhere to kung fu because it doesn't need anywhere to train. We uh, we just have to go mountain and the jungle and the train. Yeah. Wow. Then uh, after a while. Um, uh, my coach is being killed. Um, uh, I've been um, uh, uh, being shot anyway, uh, and I had to find another sport. Uh, and um, I didn't like basketball, and I, I like wo- uh, the volleyball. What they told me was short, so I went to weightlifting. The only sport available. Yeah. Um, so I just sit and watch. I learn by watching. And second day, when I want to lift, I, I lift 45 snatch, 55 clean jerk. I, I, I was 16 years old with no experience and they choose me to compete for next week wow. that's it and <laughs> I, I, I hooked fantastic How, so, why do you think that weightlifting is, is so popular in Iran um, I have a I have an Iranian friend well he's, he's half Iranian half Filipino and when I asked him this question he showed me a couple of videos of some classic Iranian strength sports um, things like where you've got gigantically heavy wooden batons and you're swinging them around why do you think weightlifting is so popular in Iran it's something about being champion. It's different to be a hero. So uh, people, a lot of um, sport, they can rep- be represent and being a champion as a judo, or, uh, as a in a swimmer or any other thing. But uh, weightlifting and wrestling is become some historical um, thing in the back in, in Iran is back home. It is the uh, when people become that level, they they, they bring a big respect. Yes, uh, it's, like, it's like being a superman. Exactly, yeah. you become some special persons. You don't have to, you know. For example, you don't have to go to queue. Uh, yeah. When you go taxi, they don't charge you. You know, you're a big celebrity there. They people respect you so much. Weightlifter, if you are a good uh, good level, and uh, especially when they say you are bringing um, uh, uh, honor for the country or for your city. I'm I'm a Kurdish because of uh, that. Uh, I'm the only Kurdish one 
I bring um, um, a gold medal for my my people uh, and yeah. went to Olympic. They respect me a lot. So this is the people around me. They start uh, getting more and more involved because they want to be something like this. Yes. So the people want to be you or be, I want to be, uh, for example, uh, uh, Pak is a jam. They are one of the best lifters in this world. So you want to be uh, like them. You try harder just to have the same respect they have, you have. So when you were, when you were growing up as a lifter, which um, which other weightlifters did you aspire to be like? Which other weightlifters did you look up to? Um, actually, I think the one of the thing I remember, uh, Pak is a jam. He yeah. was seventy five category, and he did a one sixty, I think one sixty two snatch. Wow. And uh, one ninety, uh, I think three or five clean and jerk yeah. in seventy five category. That's great. And he had a very nice technique, very nice styles. Yeah. And I, I really like his styles, and um, I, I found him just two weeks ago in a Facebook. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm, <laughs> That's I'm really happy to to I can to talk to him now. So just just going back briefly to something you mentioned mentioned earlier. I mean, it, I think very few people would have come to a sport because the coach in their previous sport had been shot. Um, just I mean, tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up in Iran as a Kurdish person. A black sheep. Yeah. <laughs> Should I call this? Yeah, yeah black because, sheep um, is fine. Um, yes, my uh, my story. Um, when when I I had I had to work very very hard to to be a part of national team, um, uh, and it took took me like a, seven years to work very hard. Yeah. Um, one of the competition I never forgot. Uh, it was the international Namju Cup. They invite like eight countries, um, and I um, we, we we were five seven sixty seven category. It was sixty seven category in Ice Age. If you remember, that yeah, is the nineteen yeah. nineties, <laughs> um, and I was sixty seven and a half. Um, and I, I, I try to. One of us only have to go to the podium if you get the medals. And I, I beat the guy. Uh, uh, he's called Fashid Ghazalian, um, and he, his father was part of national coach, and the chief executive was. Uh, uh, um, it was a friend of his father. Yeah. So I beat this guy by body weight, and I get the the only gold medal in whole ten categories from Iran. Wow. The only gold medals. But what happens after one month's time, I found out they took him to the uh, Warna Cup. Remember Warna Cup? The Bulgarian one? Yes, yes. At the World Cup. And I was so surprised. I said, excuse me, I just beat this guy in international championship in front of, you know, a thousand people. Yeah. And I get the gold medal. Why he, he said, oh, they said, oh, um, he lifted more than you in training. We saw him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and because of this, I get so upset, and I train very, very, very hard. And at six months time, I beat him by fifteen kilograms. Yeah, fifteen kilogram, you know, feel is a is a big, big it's difference. It's a big jump. Yeah. Yeah, and since this way, when I finished it, I said, now don't choose me now. If you, if you dare. Yeah. So the good uh, is make me. Some people give up, yeah. and some people run away. But me, I just make me so angry. Yes. Well, I think that's uh, it, isn't it? You have to you have to use that. You have to use that to anger. fuel you. And uh, this has made me to um, break national record. Yeah. Um, and I'm uh, since three years ago. I'm try. I do my best to be something better here. But it's, <laughs> okay, leave it, leave it, leave it. <laughs> so you're um. So obviously you so you started lifting at what age again? I was 16 years old. So you were 16 years old. And how long did it take you to 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 get to a point where you you were contending for kind of national teams and. Uh, winning national championships. Um, after one year, I took a bronze medal in a, a junior championship, yeah. actually youth youth championship, and um, I nearly broke a, a student championship competitions in 56 category. I did 95 snatch and 110 clean and jerk. <laughs> after one and a half years. Yeah. Um, but they invite me for the Libya competition school championship. Yeah. Uh, but the Iranian government decided to not sending any weightlifter okay. and we just cut out. So actually, officially, after two years, I become a junior national team. Uh, but because I passed junior level and my record wasn't good enough, I had to wait to pass to 67 category. Yeah. And after three and a half years, I did 125 snatch, 120 clean and jerk, and 155 clean snatch. Sorry, yeah. other way around. 125 snatch, 155 clean and jerk, and uh, invite to the national team, uh, national team for uh, from 1988. 
then for seven years I was part of national team yes so you were you won the Iranian championship at uh, I think two different weights from 1988 to 1994 um, and you were obviously part of the national team during that period tell us a little bit about what being on the national team involved tell us a bit about the training the um, how you lived uh, that kind of stuff Oh, uh, Phil, this is uh, you're talking about the danger, uh, the torture times. Wow. Well. <laughs> um, uh, when we were the first, it was it's, uh, every lifter's dream to go to be a part of national team. Yeah. And to be invited to go there, and they call you of this is this guy. He's wearing a Iran. Uh, you're wearing the national team um, suit. Yeah. Or t-shirt. Uh, but when you go there, the the, the environment is so different, especially for me because. I was like at 1,000 kilometers away from my home, yeah. and I was the only one wearing different clothes and a different language with a weird accent again, same as now for my English. Yeah. And uh, so it's quite really not really welcome faces around you. Um, so you have to work very hard there, put your your head uh, in your in your hat so nobody can um, uh, kick you. Yeah. Um, and the, the training camp was like minimum two months time. Two months you have to stay out of home. Yeah. Practice practice um, at that time it was only uh, evening time it wasn't morning and afternoon okay. but we had to train like two months time and we've been uh, during these two three months and they have a um, um, they ask you to uh, go for um, little competitions between yeah. two periods every month and if you improved they hold you if you not improved they send you home okay um, but the, the hardest one I had it was for Olympic I had to uh, stay like a uh, um, Exactly, um, I was in a national camp for uh, six months. Yeah, uh, but I had to go home only two, three weeks time. Okay, and we they sent us to the Hungary for a four weeks uh, camp, and we went to the um, north of Iran in a special uh, environment, play exactly close to the Barcelona environment. Yeah, so we can train, you get used to the um, the, the the high and the pressure of the um, the atmosphere. The altitude, yeah. Yeah, altitude. Yes, thank you. Um, so actually, I haven't seen my family for six months. I saw three, two weeks only. Yeah. Um, so we trained afternoon, morning. They, they, we had to feed very well. Yeah. You know, but the problem at this time we didn't get enough money uh, for pocket money. Yes. Um, in my first years of the f first four years of uh, being a national team, yeah, I had a, I had two, um, I had like a two job. One of was a soldier. Yeah. But they, I didn't have to wear clothes. Yeah. Um, I just have my name in, you a, in, in a. You were in the nude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we just pretend. And it, my name wasn't at list, but um, I was working for the uh, uh, what's called regional sport the body. Yeah. For two years, I wouldn't get paid, but still, I was uh, training for in the camps. Yeah. And they send me there. They pay me for my expenses and for my um, uh, travel expenses and uh, food and uh, accommodations. Okay. Uh, but after when I when I finished my my army and I, I had a job in a, a, a regional sport body as a technical officer for um, uh, developing um, uh, in weightlifting because I, when I get my degree yeah uh, we have a law you can work in a, a regional sport body or become a, a manager for a city yeah to look up all all this uh, thing so this is why um, when I send they send me to the squads. I get little money, I get paid a little bit, but at the same time I was um, training yes. um, uh, in, in a camp. Um, so this has helped me a little bit for my family, but it wasn't that great, but still it's better than most people. So you weren't so you weren't per se paid to be a professional weightlifter, but um, you, you were paid to be a soldier, but basically that was, you were a weightlifter. As a voluntary. Yes. Um, because as a soldier, have to go to a war or they have to go to you know being uh, uh, what's called the place for the uh, inside the uh, uh, army uh, a uh, barracks or something yeah just, yes 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 that yeah. one yeah but I didn't have to yeah so I was very happy to be in a camp in a camp and then my name is the soldier still have, um, yes and I, um, I, if I didn't get paid I wasn't I didn't I didn't matter this time for me yes I'd just be part of national team and uh, um, I could train and being getting better and better. So who was who was the head who was the head coach at the time when you were on the national team? Oh, Mr. Dehnavi. Okay. Dehnavi, he's had the silver medal in junior championship. Yeah. Um, I think in 1967, I think so. Yeah. 
and um, uh, he was been for a long, long time. The one other thing I can criticize this system, um, they, treat, <coughs> they treat us all of them same. So my program, it was exactly the same as um, the heavyweight lifter. Okay. We, have, we have to do the same program, same thing. Yeah. And I argue a few times uh, we should be different because my weakness is very different to the, for example, Taimuri. Yeah. He's one of the, he's got a very strong pool, very strong uh, squad, but I was opposite. But um, they never listened to me. Yeah. And I, I, I always treat the same. Okay. And so, th what was the, the head coach? What was his style like? Was he very authoritarian? Did he listen to you? No. He stay in the corner, and yeah. just not the, not the head. Yeah. And the one that, that the, the things. The one of the things that make me to be who I am now, because when I saw the coaches there standing in the corner and just just not the head and just doing nothing, yeah. it make me angry. Yeah. Um, now because of this, um, my coaching style is different. I go around, I talk to my lifters, I make them, I make sure they are feeling me, I make sure they are, they understand I'm there for them. Yeah. So I give them everything I never get it from. Um, yes. Uh, from back home. So did, did you feel like you, when you were in the national squad with this coach, did you feel like you weren't really getting coached? Did you feel like he was just there to give you a program, watch yes. you and select a team? Yes. Yeah. I, I never get anything to um, improve uh, my styles uh, to help me to correct my uh, my errors or something I can help me. Yeah. Um, just the, the, you, you feed you, the, but they make sure you follow the programs. You must finish 90% today. Yes. You must do the, for example, uh, 18 tons today. Uh, that's when they don't care if you're injured or not. That's yeah. the thing you have to do it. And was that six, six or seven days a week? Um, it was, yeah, six days a week, yeah. And one session a day? One session a day, but uh, in the last, 1992, 93, uh, when we went to Hungary, we had the two times a day. Okay, and, training. What, and, what, and what was the philosophy like? Was it, was it a Russian style? Was it a Bulgarian style? Or was it a, I, a hybrid or an original style? I think a hybrid is quite mixing between them. We had a Ukrainian uh, co um, Russian coach, yeah. Mikov. Uh, Mikov, Mikov. It was a very good coach, but um, he didn't talk them. He wasn't allowed okay. to uh, to um, give us the a, a right writer um, advice. And he was just um, what's called behind uh, behind the stage. Yes. And he gave us some little feedback. Even we go to sauna, he gave us a massage um, after the trainings. And actually, it was like a second-hand coach. He was a great coach, but he wasn't allowed to bring yeah. his uh, yeah. stuff. What about when you were competing? Would, would your sort of head-nodding coach be beside the platform <laughs> with you? Or, or would no, he, this, he not be that, there either? No, this time they were different. They were they, In the competition time, they were there. Okay. They try to help you. They, uh, you know, they change weight for you. This time is different, you know. You become celebrity this for this one yes. moment. Yeah. The competition time. Um, is that, that because was, people were watching them as well as you? Maybe, maybe the camera was. Camera is everywhere. Our yeah. competitions, they have a camera backstage, front stage, and it's been even the newspaper, uh, the parasite, uh, um, the photographer everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so maybe, maybe, but still, um, uh, I remember in China, uh, we my best competitions. He really looked after me. Yeah. Uh, my first competition, he tried to give me um, uh, what's called is a good encouragement and uh, stay strong. Yeah. And I think I did very well. My first competition in China, I did um, 125 snatch, 160 kg jerk. Yeah. And I was only 21 years old. Yeah. Um, it was very, it was good. So what was just give us an idea of a kind of a a normal you know an average training session. What what would the structure have been of say one of the training sessions at the at the national squad camp? Um, uh, squat every day. Squat every day. For sure. What kind and of also, what kind of percentages and reps and things like that? Any way you can do. When you are in a good mood, just push push yourself um, um, as heavy as you can. Uh, yeah. Try to go like a four sets, three sets. And but if it's not good mood, just to go so eighty five percent. Yeah. And try to make a three times three or three times four. Okay. Or when, when you have no competition, you can go for uh, four times four. Yeah. Um, so that w was four reps the highest that you would ever go to. Um, yes, you yeah. don't go for. But we have a no competitions for the build up. Uh, when I back home, yeah, sometimes I go for uh, just um, challenging your your bodies or yeah. like you know, uh, we do that. Yeah, How six often? times, six times three, four. Yeah. How yeah. often would you squat to max in a week? Um, in back home, actually, uh, once a week. Once a week to maximum. Okay. Once a week, yeah. 
one semi as much as you can one front squad and back squad yeah the, the pool wasn't that priority priority we're not allowed to do that have much pool because is um maybe the injuries yes because um and the bulgarian believed anything you can clean and jerk you don't have to lift 10 kilograms more it's not necessary yes just um, uh, um is increasing your um uh, level of injury by doing heavy pull yeah okay. but they don't go that they don't concentrate on heavy pull that much yes so would you was the the focus or the majority of your training based around the classic lifts based around clean and jerk from the floor snatch from the floor um power snatch uh, power cleans but uh, i prefer to go to the, uh, the with a small disc Okay. You know, the, the bars go to the lowest possible or uh, go uh, on the corner of the platforms yes so more pressure on the legs yeah. and I um, I develop a lot of strength by uh, 125 power snatch from the corner okay so a bit like uh, a bit like working from deficit off of a that's you know the, almost the equivalent of standing on a block and yes but you make your your squat level is much much lower yes so you have to engage more leg power yes and the hips could not go raise yeah so the hips stay lower than your your knee yes usually in normal standard we standing your hips is over your knee yes but this level your hips is go lower than your uh, your knee yeah and you have to get more pressure from the legs and the hips uh, lock the hips lower it's a lot of pressure but uh, when you go to the when you're losing weight especially lose weight yeah uh, the weakness your back uh, um, you don't feel that much uh, you you losing your your strength and is, is that uh, an exercise and a technique that you still use with your lifters today? Uh, every day. Every day. Uh, but one day with the power and the opposite for clean and jerk. Uh, okay. Uh, tech technique. And we do the power snatch, we must do uh, full clean and jerk same day. Maybe okay. from block, maybe from hang, maybe from the corner, but still you have to do it full technique. Yes. Well, we, we might come back to that a bit later on. I, you know, I'd be keen to get an idea of your, your current training philosophies uh, a little bit later. But just going back to uh, your your time in Iran, um, you know you were Iranian national record holder um, and Iranian champion for, for from eighty eight to ninety four. Um, were, were you a celebrity in Iran? Did people know who you were? If you if you were walking down the street, would you be recognised? Uh, still, still now. Still well, it's, now. After, it's funny after. when we were in Poland, we were speaking to one of the Iranian reporters there, and I threw your name into the pot. And she said, "Oh, you know Kazim." Really? Yeah. She? Yes. Or he? She. A girl, yes. And and really? she was quite attractive, I'm... actually, too. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> what, what's her name? <laughs> you you could be in there. I think she may have added me to Facebook, so I'll track her down for you. So That's yes. Great. So even Actually, even now you're recognised in Iran. Still, yeah, when I go home, still uh, most of the young people they are all grow up now. They still um, they still recognise my face. They give, they come and say hello. They take a photo with me. The taxis mostly don't charge me. Really? And still, I'm, I'm changing now. I'm getting older. I had a big mustache as before. Now, yeah. no mustache. <laughs> but still, the people have a respect. A lot. When I go to the any, um, when I go to any weightlifting um, uh, hall, yeah, um, people standing and they don't sit until like uh, when I sit. Wow. Um, they have a big respect still. Uh, my my photo still is also uh, in uh, one of the. Uh, my city that's uh, hanging around there with the, my record. Wow, this is um, it's nice. When I go home, you don't you don't feel lonely. Yes. Here you do all this hard work, and even you don't get any respect from your own own people. Sure. We have a uh, feel, uh, we have an old saying that if if um, they said um, if you don't have a respect from your own family, you should not expect respect from your neighbor. Yes. So if my weightlifting family in, in Britain they don't have to give me respect, how should I expect respect from rugby player or from you know sport England or from yeah. uh, UK sport? So if you don't respect each other, if you don't give us as a honor or credit, yes. So why should I uh, expecting my local newspaper yeah. come to me and have an interview for me when I'm my own people they don't see what I'm doing? Well, I think one of the, one of the problems is is that we um, you know because weightlifting is a relatively minority sport. In Britain, um, people aren't aware necessarily of your accomplishments. Um, clearly, in Iran, people grew up watching you. Um, people grew up fully aware of what you achieved in the sport, um, and I think that's that's probably part of the part of the issue. Really, um, you know, we're we're aware of the achievements of of a Dave Morgan, or we're aware of the achievements of a, you know, it could be a Giles Greenwood or someone like that. But we don't perhaps recognise the achievements of someone like yourself. 
that's the thing that is hurting so much. You work very hard. Actually, feel I changed my lifestyle since three years ago. Completely, I I um, I refused to have any job. Yeah. As a, uh, for other things, I just want to be a coach. So even I changed my car as a special for uh, holding the bar. Special to can kind of fit two meter bar. Yeah. And I built the car seven seats so I can lift, um, carry my lifters yeah. as a seven seats. Um, I completely uh, get. Um, I found a place to kind of store my lifts here. Yeah. Um, and I went. The, everything I just try to be a fit to the, my new lifestyles. Yes. Especially since I have a, I lost my knee because of the five operations. Yeah. I can't do sport anymore. So I'm I'm trying to uh, be a full coach. Yes. Give them everything one lifter need. As a as a, such a uh, advice, yes. as a as a uh, massage physio, um, um, going with them for a meeting to the schools. Yeah, I've talked to parents. You know, I spend a lot of time. Yes. even on the coaching with the through the Facebook. Yeah, um, give them advice or uh, corrections, and you know how hard to make a program for one competition, yeah. each person. So sometimes I spend two or three days. Um, to uh, design a program for my lifters, yes, individually, yeah, and the, the reason you can see that all my lifters they have a very good result. They, they improved all the time. Yes, they always any competition they go they lift more. Yeah, because I believe the program is good. Yes, if the program is not good, maybe just one or two improve and the others stay. But everyone improved the thing. I don't remember any of the thing my lifters uh, have a. Maybe it's just one out of ten. Yes. They all improve. Yeah. So that means I put my heart. Yes. And this obviously, this I, I, as you said earlier, this is a reflection of, of perhaps what you didn't feel that you got from the national coach. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I had missing uh, from this this moment. And I, when I get to some level, I give everything I have, yeah. all my experience, whatever I can do. Except the the illegal part, everything I can do, I give it to them. Yes, just to, just uh, just to give the the listeners a little bit of context. Um, during this period in Iran, obviously there was some quite significant sort of international tension, um, you know, between Iran and and the West. Um, were you aware of this at the time? Was it was it something that was very much within the within the news and and, and within the culture? And, and I wonder if perhaps that kind of um, political disassociation um, is part of the reason why maybe the the achievements that, that you had in Iran haven't been perhaps quite as well recognised within within Britain. Um, I don't know. I just the politically the best. I have no comment. No comment. <laughs> I think. I think you know maybe. You know, it, maybe if you bring them, uh, ask you a question different way, maybe I understand better. Yeah, well, I just, I just wonder if, you know, if if you look at the the, the current batch of Iranian lifters, if you look now. at like, yeah, if you look at like a Rastami. Oh no! Okay, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, but, but, yeah. but just just thinking about now, you know, for a second, you look at Rastami, you look at um, Salimi, you look at Mulayi. The achievements of these lifters it, are well recognised in other nations. You know. The British lifting community is aware of this. Um, the American lifting community is aware of this. Oh, but, I get it. But, but during your period, um, there was a very strong political kind of disassociation between Iran and the and West. Yes, so, exactly. So, do, do you think this is this is perhaps been a, a, a blockage, really, in terms of people in Britain and the West appreciating what you achieved? Actually. Phil, this is a very, very good point. I never think of this, but I can now it's clear to me. When I had to go to the competitions for uh, back home, yeah. um, usually in that back times, we have a beard. It's quite part of the religions. Yes. Even if you're not religious, you have to be like everybody else. Yes. And when you come out the country as a representing a, a country, people thinking of the uh, a terrorist or uh, that the yes. This, this kind of stuff, they all look at you the same thing. They yes. don't see that you're you're an athlete. You're coming to uh, bring a peace, yes. uh, the sport. But this is the the background is behind you. Yes. Um, always bring this. And I remember when I went to China, I had the beard because I was a soldier. 
Yeah. And the Chinese people get so surprised. They come to sauna and trip touching my beard. Oh, really? And they, <laughs> they, they, they played with my beard and they said, oh, what is this? What is this? They make fun of this because they, they don't have beard. Yes. And uh, me, when I saw that tomorrow I shaved. Yes. I don't want people to make fun of me. I didn't know that things outside the uh, back home yes. is, um, is something, a, a barrier yes. between you and other people. Yes. So I tried to cut this barrier, but I went back home. He said, oh, so you just had a beard that would go to outside the country. Yeah. And uh, we have a special, as I'm a Kurdish, I, I wasn't allowed to have a contact to uh, uh, be open to the go outside. Yes. Uh, um, uh, especially when I went to Olympic, uh, Iran and Iraq, they had a fight. Uh, they had they had a war. Yes. And, and um, um, I had a, uh, one Kurdish guy uh, from Iraq, and he was uh, he was Kurdish too. Yeah. And I really tried to contact uh, talk to him because we have the same language. Yes. But um, I was so worried if I contact, I've been kicked out from the national team. Yes. So every everything you have some political hold you to be you, who you are really. Yes. Because you want to be a, a fit to the system. Yeah. And to being fit the system. Uh, people look at you as same thing back, but now it's be better now. People are uh, they are um, they are more open and they can see um, um, the system is back. So the, the, the people is yes. not part of the government. Yeah, the government difference is a politics, but the people doing this they are different. People they they don't want to be uh, they don't follow or they don't agree with the system, yeah. but they leave the system. Yes. Um, so that's why we try to fit. Yes. And to get fit. We just stay out. So, um, so just think, thinking back to this period of your career, up, up until about ninety four, what what would you say was the pinnacle? What would you say was the moment that you you look back on with the most pride? My most pride when I said uh, uh, when I when I every competition I come back home, and people driving ten miles through to my car to my bus yeah. and to give me a flower. Well. Wow. That's that's that show how they appreciate that a person with different language show them uh, my my boy. Yes. He's a, he's a stronger than the, the the Turkish or the uh, far Iranian guys. That's they they so proud of me. Yes. And that's make me always work harder. Like I, I feel I'm a soldier with no with uh, with no gun, but yes. I have to to um uh, be in, to 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 shine. Um, stronger yes and to lift more bring more medals I can make my people proud yes that's always I was thinking in this my, my past just actually I did it for my people to make them happy so was that was that the same when you won the Iranian championships or was that when you won Asian games or was that all of them uh, actually most when I was abroad when I come back from yes. abroad um, that's become uh, uh, more um, more important yes because uh, in in running a championship, I won a lot of medals, and people start getting that doesn't care because I said, oh, it's his again. Yeah, yeah it's no yeah, fun. Yeah. And it's uh, just keep getting a national um, running competition. It just becomes so, so um, and just yeah, yeah, again, yeah, again. But when you go abroad, it's very important to you know uh, go um, um, standing on the Chinese and beating the Korea. Yes. Um, that one is really, I really, uh, I was so proud in Warner Cup, um, Yoto Yoto. Um, this is my category, yeah. And I get second place uh, in a World, World Cup. And uh, the second guy, the third guy, was Algeria in Olympic. He, got, he took fourth place. Yeah. So it was very. When you, they, they, the people, because of this knowledge, they, they chase the news. Yeah. They try to understand who is my category and try to um, research. Yeah. For uh, from other uh, nations. Yeah. So that's make make it more interest of the. When I come back home, people talking about the, the guy who I compete, they even they know, um, most of them, uh, how much they live in less competition, yeah. and are they injured or not, and I didn't know his information, they find it for me. Yes. So this is, bring more information to, uh, bring uh, bring this to community. Yeah. Uh, so let me, let me ask you a, a question, and get, get your perspective on this. Yes. In Iran, you were, uh, you know, a celebrity, people knew you, they still do, um, yet, it, weightlifting is a you know a minority sport in Britain. Um, you would walk down the street in Britain, and and very few people, if any, would recognise you. No one. How, how does that? <laughs> what, what what are your feelings on that? It's obviously a, a you know a, a, a very interesting kind of a parallel. You know that in one country you're a you're a celebrity, in another country you're just another person walking down the street. 
Okay, I'll give you two examples, Phil. <laughs> um, in back home, when you go to the uh, uh, some office, you're looking for um, getting your letter done by, for example, very important letter for university. Yeah. And I'm looking to get the sign by the, uh, the for example, um, uh, the headmaster. Yeah. And I just have to go to the receptions and I tell them, uh, hi, um, my name is this and I'm part of national team. They just straight away take me to the, to the room yes. and I don't have to wait for the uh, being in a system, a yes. uh, queue system. But here, when I came to this country for first uh, for first year, I was uh, confused between the, my back home here. So when I was at college, uh, when I uh, we tried to learn English. Yeah. So we tried to speak to each other, everyone standing up and they tell me about who you are and said, yes, me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I, when I introduced myself, nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody cares who you are. Nobody even remember tomorrow what you're saying today. Yeah. So um, it was quite <laughs> weird. <laughs> and uh, even it's quite weird for you uh, of, uh, to get fit in and said, my God, why I'm here? Um, why I choose this country? Why I came um, for the sport? Nobody, nobody cared when I just realized um, it's nobody remember your name even for five minutes afterward because it's uh, it's quite hard like um, the pronouncing for like we we can't remember Chinese name because yes. it's uh, all the same to us. Yes. Ching, chung, chung, ching, ching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but same for the uh, for the English people. My name or my surname is quite hard to remember, and I didn't know this time. Yes. And but the worst thing happened when I went to the Crystal Palace, and I uh, I went to uh, train. Yeah. And I, I told, <laughs> it's, I remember it's so funny now. When I remember I said, when I met Kid Morgan for the first time, yeah. and I, I told him that uh, I want to um, come and train, and my English was so poor, um, and I asked him, um, uh, uh, shall I train with you? He said, yes, yes, yes. Um, I said, um, um, shall I get a travel cost to come here? He said, no. Uh, I said, okay, am I, am I getting any shoes, uh, weightlifting shoes? He said, no. <laughs> am I getting any, any, uh, any things for uh, my travel expenses? He said, no. Uh, he said, why? I was so surprised because yeah. my back home, they pay for my flight, they yeah. pay for my uh, uh, track suits, any company that I go, I had the shoes, I get the uh, pocket money, everything, yeah. even for training. And he said, you're lucky I don't charge you yeah. for training here. I said, what? I have to pay for training? Yeah. <laughs> And Brilliant. I just shocked. I just shocked. Just a culture two, shock, change of culture. Two two different worlds. Yeah. A, mo a moon and Mars, and I just was confused. My God, I have to pay for my training here. Yeah. Brilliant. And um, just uh, did it, it was did it, it was so hard. It was very hard. Do you think it changed you as a person? Do you think because it would be very easy in that in that situation in Iran where you are a, a celebrity where, you know, people are standing up when you walk into a room and things, and then suddenly you come to Britain and no one knows who you are and you're not getting any respect and you're not getting any free shoes. Do you... I'd like some free shoes. Did it, did it, <laughs> did it change you as a person? Do you think it made you more humble? Or were you always the same? I get depressed. Depressed? Yeah, depressed because you just know there's no one. You hardly can communicate with other people. Um, you don't. Um, you don't even know. I've been told that I have to wait five years to get the national passport. Yeah. Then I can compete for Britain's. And I was. Um, it was Sydney competition right around the corner. Yeah. Um, and I did um, before Sydney. I did one thirty-five snatch, one seventy-five, seventy clean and jerk. Yeah. Uh, but my my British passport didn't arrive, and I couldn't go to the. I wouldn't. I, I'd be able to even go for trial for the Sydney. Yeah. Um. It is. It is very uh, feel. It feel feel very bad. Yeah. Very bad. And the, the humble things, um, the things. One of the things in the, in the back home, um, people expecting, be different, from being champion or yes. being hero. Yeah. Is, the champion. Look up, and chest out, walk the street like a, like a robot. Yes. But the the hero or the one that respect people head down look down and uh, say hello to everyone yeah. and never show off and never try to hurt anyone and try to help people yeah so to be this person if you you have to be this person to people respect you yeah so because of the I try to be nice to everyone in my my city I try to be friendly to everyone I respect for everyone so um and here, if you kiss someone, they're gonna kiss you. Kick you? What? You kiss? Yeah. We're not allowed to even <laughs> kissing anyone because it's a was a, 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 a sexual harassment. Yeah, yeah. What do you think it's like now? Let's say you're 
you're a, a Salimi, you're a Rastami, or or even maybe a, a Rezazadeh. How how is it different to your time? I mean, I, I suppose Rezazadeh was kind of still in your time a little bit, certainly when he was starting. Um, uh, uh, when I left Rezazadeh, was he um, uh, um, just came to national team? It was his. He was so young and big. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Nothing's um, changed. It's far from just got older. Old and big. Um, but um, I think when I went, I went to the Olympic Village in 2012 when I was working as a um, technical officer, and I went to the uh, Salimi's room. Um, he stand up and say hello to me. He give me a kiss and he wear his clothes. He had a, he wear a shirt, so he respect of me. He he wear he, he wear clothes. He said. Sorry about that. I'm I'm just not comfortable. And he sitting there when I uh, it was the guy is a world champion, yeah. but he still bring show his humble as a respect for yes. the people older than you because they see me as a as an old lifter. It's been before them, um, and I was the only the, one of the first lifter in the country. I snatched my double body weight. Yeah. So they remember this. Yeah. And he was so nice to me, and I'm just I really appreciate that. I remember his uh, kind face. And most of people like this, they are very quite, quite, uh, um, they are kind yes. to the other people. But sometimes um, people get annoyed. Um, especially, I remember um, 2006, I was um, 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 trying to go to Thailand, um, and in uh, Ankara, in uh, Istanbul um, uh, transit, I met Iranian team. Yeah. Uh, and Reza Zadeh was there. Um, and they all coming to and say hello to each other. How are you? This is because I met them before in a World Unit Championship for my brother when I took him uh, to the Italy World Championship. And uh, we started talking to Razade, and some guys came with the ca- little camera, the small guy, the teeny weeny guy. He came and said, Mr. Razade, can I have a take a photo with you? And I said, I'm so tired. I took a photo like today with 100 views today. Just wait and let me talk to this person, to me. And yeah. the guy said, Oh, my flight is gone. My flight, I have to go. Can I have a take a photo with you? I said, I told you, wait, I'm gonna, when I finish with this person, I talk to you, take a photo with you. Yeah. And the, the voices get raised because of his first thing of um, that of photo, that of people stopping him. Yeah. But these people, some of them, they take it nicely, some people get angry, yeah. and he get, he get angry. And the guy said, oh, you are so selfish. And he's, uh, he tried to run away, and he was, he nearly, <laughs> he, he, he tried to chase him. Yeah. Um, so this is um, depends to, to the persons how how they react and how is the the, the real personality they have. Yeah. They can hide it behind a nice face. Yeah. Or someone they really they are humble. What, what what was just out of interest? What what has been your experience of uh, Razaza Day? Because I know when the couple of times that we met him in um, in Poland at the World Champs, he just he he has this kind of uh, aura of being like the Godfather. He just kind of sits there. You ask him for a photo or an autograph, and he'll just kind of nod his head. You know, he kind of he seems like an Iranian mafia leader. That's why he's not popular in Iran. Yeah. Um, he's not popular. He's a great man. He's a great lifter. Yeah. He's um, one of the, you know, uh, chosen one to be just to go to be that level. Yes. But, but the personality things. Even his city, he's not really uh, familiar. People doesn't like him that much. Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess I I hear that his wedding was on on national television, and so I, I'd hope that in Iran at least he would have been a, a popular guy. Um, although he was quite nice to me, I, I asked him to <laughs> to sign a Olympic flag and get a photo with him. Um, it's good because he makes me look quite thin. <laughs> um, but he seemed okay. He didn't didn't say very much. Although I do understand he speaks fairly good English. Um, not really. Uh, Kurush is better. Kurush Bagheri. Bagheri, uh, yes. Yeah, cool. they came to. Be they, great to get an interview with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's quite better. Um, um, I invite the, both of them to come to my house during uh, after Olympic period. Yeah. Um, and um, we had a lot of talk here. But just, <laughs> just experience. Yes, we won't say any more about that. Um, no. Just quickly, obviously, you went to the '92 games in uh, Barcelona. I believe it was, wasn't it, 92? Yes, um, Barcelona. And it, it didn't go as well for you as probably you'd hoped? Yes, actually. Um, I think I, I was stupid, I think so, or or I've been playing stupid. 
um, the night before, I had to lose weight. Um, uh, I was two kilogram above. Yeah. And you know, Barcelona is very, very hot city. Yeah. And we didn't have a air, air condition. I tried to, um, I tried to um, open the door, but my uh, Abbas Talibi, he's the one. He's he's, he's dead now. He's uh, he's got heart attack. Um, uh, I think eight years ago, and he's one of the very, very good lifters in this country. He. In 75, he did 155 snatch and 185 clean and jerk. Yeah, very good. And he was my teammate, uh, my roommate. Um, and I couldn't sleep night, and I tried to um, uh, close the window to lose weight, but he got upset yeah. because he didn't want to lose weight, <laughs> and I did. Um, and I just moving around and I'm moaning and moaning, and he gave me a little, uh, the half tablet of volume. Okay. Uh, I think one. I said, you get this one, you sleep very well tonight, and you have to, don't worry about this. Yeah. And I just like a dumb, dumb person. I just get a tablet from him. Yeah. And I swallow it. Tomorrow morning, I sleep very well. Yes. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> and I, and, I, and I, I lost weight the morning, but my body was so loose yes. and, and la- lame. Yeah. Um, and I, when I had a 20, 125, I did 135 snatch just um, two weeks before. Yeah. And the 125 is like a hundred kilogram over my hand. Yeah. And I couldn't hold it. Yeah. And now it's crashing my shoulder, and uh, I dislocated my left shoulder. Yeah. Uh, actually, my right. Sorry, my right shoulder. That one is here. What, what What were your coming into the games? What were your? I could get a sixth place. You could have got sixth, you think? Sixth place. Yeah. And just luckily, um, the most uh, category they went moved down to sixty kilograms, and the two of them they moved to seventy five, and only fourteen lifters was available in my category. Yeah. And from these fourteen, two of them bumped. Yeah. So twelve lifters left. And I, I could beat six of them. Yeah. So I could get easily get sixth place, very easy. But just I couldn't have a one lift. I mean, obviously, I, obviously going to an Olympics is a, is, is a massive honor anyway, and, a, and an incredible God. achievement. Um, but do you, is it one of your biggest regrets looking back that you didn't perform to more to your ability? Okay, I guess tell you this. Um, I my first born son has died um, uh, when I was uh, when I get married first. Yeah. I, I didn't cry, but in Olympic I cried three days. Really? So that wow. means how important it was. So absolutely. Um, I cried three days. Uh, I didn't leave the room and just stay there and didn't go. Out. Yes. So I guess at that point were you were you focused on trying to go to the Atlanta Games? Was that uh, was that was that something that was your a goal for you at the time? Uh, in ninety six, do you mean? Yes. Actually, ninety six. Um, uh, in uh, nineteen ninety five, before I left country, yeah, I was injured. Uh, my knees hurting, and I couldn't train that much. Yeah, and I was that I think twenty seven years old. Yeah, and I've been told by the national coach, "You're getting old now." Yeah, and I feel me so upset because I saw you know uh, Dimas was thirty five years old, an Olympic champion. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I said I never I knew it. They want to push me away. Yeah, they had to try to this this uh, to not um, encouraging me and give me a bit bad feedback. Yeah, to lose my hope, and also um, the other reason I left my country because I was supposed to be a, um, a city manager. Yeah, in one of the smallest city in uh, in back home, and I had um, I had um, the certificates for my job. Yeah, but uh, the governor of the city he was Turkish. He didn't let me to. Uh, get the job, and he hold me to as an assistant manager. Okay. Uh, um, so I was working under guys. He had a, um, uh, I had a degree, and this person has a diploma. Yeah. And he have no experience of sport, and I, I was <laughs> record Iran record holder with the silver medal in Asians. Um, so I have to work under his arm. Yeah. Um, so I just three months time I did, and get so upset. And I just, um, I couldn't handle the, the, the discrimination. Mm-hmm.